Shields start quite high, we end with these round tops here, and as they develop, they get flatter on the top. But eventually, as armor starts protecting hands and legs and feet even, then the shields themselves get smaller for greater maneuverability. Now, I've mentioned maneuverability and moving a lot in this tour, and the reason is, it is the best armor in the world. The best armor in the world is not being there when someone's trying to hit you. So this is another myth that really does need debunking. A lot of people think if a knight falls over, that he can't get back up, that he just kind of sits and flaps, but we can see that's not true. I mean, knights can, I mean, they get a bit annoyed, but they can still move. They can, they can jump, they can do star jumps, they can do press-ups, they can do press-ups with my foot on their back, and they can get up. So as you can see, the idea that a knight can't move in his armour is completely false. This stuff is manoeuvrable. But it is also crucially very good at protecting. Armour itself, if you hit someone with mail on, you can see that the link's actually compressed. It's almost impossible to cut through. You can just about stab through it if you get the right point and if you put enough force in with the twist to break the links. But again, that takes a lot of effort and it's quite difficult to do. He has armour covering everywhere. And the only place that he has a real place of steel to protect against a real crushing blow is his helmet. And these are not fake. These are for a very crucial purpose. In fact, Hollywood would have you believe that a knight might rip his helmet off before going into battle and show his flowing, flowing locks like Orlando Bloom tends to do in films like Kingdom of Heaven, but that would in fact be an act of surrender. To take one's helmet off in battle is to say, I give up, I surrender, I don't want to fight anymore. Indeed, to carry on fighting without a helmet is known as suicide in the 12th century. So, now we see Sir Samuel's shield going on. So, as I said, the shield is a good identifying mark, but I want to point out a few things about it. The first is that it's made of wood. It's not made of metal. It is wood, planks of wood, and then rimmed in leather. Now, the idea of this is not that it stops every single blow. No shield could do that. And indeed, a metal shield would be too heavy to carry, and if it dented in this bit where his arm is, it would just break his arm and bind him to the shield. Instead, we have maneuverable shields, ones that can cause blows to, bl to glance off the person, so that if a blow comes in at a quarter degree, you can just move and use the shield to deflect it as opposed to stop it head on. Now, shields, of course, being wooden, again, sharp weapons do get battered, they do get destroyed, indeed, they take quite a lot of damage as this one has. But that's fine, because wood and leather are cheap in the Middle Ages. They are really easy to produce and they're really cheap to make. So a knight could carry six or seven of those into battle. Indeed, they did. They took about five or six, seven shields in to a battle with them. They'd get it destroyed. They'd go out of the fight, have their squires drop on a different shield, and go back into the fray when they were ready to continue. The idea, again, is that the armor is about deflection. It's not about complete and utter protection. However, knights obviously did get hit. And they were, they were often, don't worry, <laughs> they do obviously get hit, and that's actually why these maces, that's why we're wearing these. Maces are the best form of getting through male armor. Now, swords, as I said, are expensive, they're prestige weapons, but as I also said, they don't really cut very well. So the question might be asked, how do you get through it? How do you stop them fighting? If you can't stab them and you can't cut them, what can you do? Well, you can bash them. You can take out their joints, and you can stop them fighting, but crucially not killing them. Now, you might see Hollywood films, again, having fields of knights killed in great battles. That almost never happened. What really happened was that knights would ransom each other. As you'll see in the tournament later, those of us who are defeated are taken ransom by the victors. What victors would do is take the knights that they defeated in battle, back to their homes, they'd go hunting with them and play chess with them, feed them and keep them until their families could pay the price of the house for the armor and the price of the car for the sword back to the Lord and their family so that war just becomes a game of money where people don't die. It's a far nicer system, it solves just things a bit better and it involves less death. Crucially, involving less death is good given that most, of, most normal nobility were in fact related. Most of the world is in 2% of the population of the 12th century, and therefore, to kill another noble is almost certainly to kill a cousin or some form of in-law relation. That makes Christmas dinner quite awkward, doesn't it? So the final thing that Sir Samuel has is his lance. 
Now this is a weapon that is required of every single soldier in the 12th century according to the 1181 document called the Assize of Arms, issued by King Henry. The idea is that every man has at least an iron cap and a lance. Lance is just the French for spear, so it can mean a 10 foot pop used in two hands or from horseback or a slightly shorter one used, such as by Sir Samuel here, just in a line. So that's our knight dressed and ready. But there are a few more myths I want to debunk. The first myth is... Oh no, this is terrible. I have a problem. Yeah, we've done, we've done jumping. Unless you want to continue jumping, I can hit you again. I can... Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, well, in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, do you want to see these two fight? So, the myth that I'm going to debunk is actually really simple. It's that you don't throw your shield away in battle. Drop your shield. Keep yours. The problem, ladies and gentlemen, with dropping one shield in battle and not using it is that if you run into battle with no shield, this happens. There's nothing to protect you on one side of your body. It's almost impossible to stay alive against a line of people with shields if you drop your own. Go on, get up. He's probably all right, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think our Baron hits him too hard. The second myth, you can pick up your shield and your lance now, is that knights and that these lances were used one-on-one -on -one a lot. Straight ahead, like this. Combat is <coughs> quite slow when you fight this way. Again, gentlemen. What you find is lots of kind of bashing front and side. Now, I'd like you to pause for a second. I'd like you both to take a step to your left. Now we have sort of a different situation, ladies and gentlemen. We have a combat where you've got people standing in lines. But what you've also got, therefore, is lots of spears pointed diagonally at each other crossways. Gaps in shield walls appear by people pulling out shields slightly, and then those gaps being taken advantage of by someone clever. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a little tidbit of information, is why pawns take diagonally in chest. The man with the spear never fights the man in front of him, he fights the man diagonally either side of him. So I think we've exhausted pretty much all of the arms and armour of the 12th century. I've shown you a little bit about the developments and a little bit about why it's used in some myths. So uh, we've actually just run out of time in fact, so I'm going to say thank you very much for coming. Uh, I encourage you to look around the other stalls here, look at the face painting, look at the shield decoration. Our camp is just over there and there is also a Saxon camp over the other side that I'd encourage you to look at. I'd also say I'd love it if you could stick around until about 4 o'clock when we're going to hold the tournament pretty much where you're sat now. So thank you very much.